Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 506, written by Ryan Blizzard. Secrets of the Wandering Shawshank Redemption. I was recently re-watching the Shawshank Redemption, as I love that film. I decided to re-watch it around 11pm and I got too sleepy and paused it when Andy arrives at Shawshank with Norton and Byron Hadley at the prison intake, the scene where Byron abused the prisoner for asking when they eat. As I paused the film, I went to sleep and it was on my living room couch. Woke up in the morning in my bedroom, which creeped me out at first, but then I thought I must have moved there and just forgot. I went to the living room, the TV was offline and the Blu-ray for the film was not in the tray, I was pretty confused. Tried to find it, but when I took it out, the box was in my bedroom with no disc inside. I immediately thought it could be in the Blu-ray player in my bedroom television, since the box had seemingly magically moved there. Turned the TV on to check, and it was. Upon resuming play, it was on the exact same timestamp that I left it on when I went to sleep. I do not remember going to my bed, moving it, tampering, or waking up and I do not think I would wake up, be all tired, move the disc over and not continue any of the film, all for no reason. And just to note, I live alone, so no one else could have done anything. Since I tend to be more on the rational side, I don't immediately jump on the assumption that it was a glitch in the matrix, however, it's interesting to think about. The only explanation is that I woke up, went over there and put the disc in, went to the exact timestamp as before and went back to sleep and forgot it all. However, I do not have any idea why I would do that. I was extremely tired when I went to sleep. I would not have wanted to watch any more until the next day. Never mind move the disc over to my bedroom and not actually continue any of it. Case Notes, file number 506. The mundane possibility here would involve sleepwalking. You took the disc out, moved it to your bedroom, and then crashed there, not realizing any of that happened. However, it's very rare for adults to suddenly start sleepwalking. Typically, it's a pattern throughout one's life. So if nothing odd has happened during the night for you before, it's not likely to be sleepwalking. It could actually be evidence of a quantum crossover. You may have died during the night, suddenly, which happens more often than we'd like to think. Of course, fear not. If quantum immortality is true, we have nearly infinite lives to fall back on and the transition between death and reanimating in another you across into a parallel universe is seamless. Most of the time people's memory of their own death is carried forward with them. But if they die while asleep, I guess there'd be no memory to cross with. Case file number 507, written by Spiritual Tadpole 177. Secrets of The Accidental Imposter. One day I was at school and someone asked me, Hey, were you at the gym downtown yesterday? I said no. Why? They said, I swear I saw someone who is identical to you. That's crazy. I don't think much of it. This happens, right? Well, small instances like this keep happening over the years. This is the most recent one I can remember that happened over the past year or so. October 2020. I accepted a job in a town across the state. I accepted the job immediately, having been unemployed for 7 months during the pandemic. I moved to the town across the state, I'd never even been there before. During my first week at work, I'm walking down the hallway and I hear, hey you, in a friendly kind of voice. I turn around and this person's smile kind of fades and they ask, you are, name, are you? I said no, I'm not. They said, that's so weird, I could have sworn it was. A couple weeks later I notice a different person in a meeting looking at me. After the meeting they come up and ask me if I'm Name's daughter. I of course say, no, sorry, I just moved here and I don't know who you're talking about. This happened to me again with yet a different person just last week. I was at work and someone sees me from across the hall and says, hey, what are you doing here? I said, um, what do you mean? They walked closer and said, Oh, I thought you were someone I haven't seen in a long time. A few months ago, I went to a local deli to get a sandwich. I walked up to the counter to order and the girl behind the counter goes, Hey, do I know you from somewhere? I say I don't think so. Turns out she goes to the local college, but I'm not a student, 
so we agree we must not know each other. Two weeks ago, I was at a bar. Went up to the bar and ordered a drink, and the bartender asked me for the last name on the tab, so I told her my last name. Again, this person looks up at me and says, I think I know you. I asked her first and last name, and it didn't sound familiar to me at all, which also I didn't think my first name sounded familiar, but my last name, which is super unusual, I have never met another person with my last name, had apparently sparked something in her she claimed was familiar. I could tell she felt like she had to know me from somewhere, so she kept asking me about my family. She asked me if my family owned a business, which they do in my hometown, but then she said, never mind, I have never visited that town, so maybe I don't know you after all. Just a few days ago, I was at a bar with a mixed group of friends. Suddenly, this random guy comes up and stands next to me and asks me what I'm drinking, how long I've been out, etc. Essentially, making small talk. Me and my friends keep making eye contact with each other, all wondering who the heck this guy is. I stopped him mid-sentence and said, I'm sorry, but do we know you? Not trying to be rude or anything, just none of us knew who this guy was. He said, You don't remember me? Aren't you… name? I said, No, sorry, I'm not. He apologized and awkwardly left. Why does this keep happening? You can explain away this happening two or three or four times, over a year, maybe, that I just have one of those faces, but this is happening all the time. Why does everywhere I go, someone feel like they know me or approach me thinking I'm someone I'm not? I typically don't think much of it, but it's been happening a lot more frequently and my friends have started to notice too. Bonus file, written by Boo Boo, 2022, Secrets of The Steel-Toed Boots Haunting. Shortly before becoming pregnant with my second child in 2008, we moved into a 100-year-old mansion that had been renovated into separate apartments. I had never had any sort of paranormal experience before living here, so most of what I've experienced I brushed off or made excuses for, but some things were really hard to ignore. I would frequently see shadows or movements out of the corner of my eye, hear whispers that very distinctly sounded like they were coming from inside my apartment and would often have lights turn on and off by themselves. One night in the middle of summer, I was about 7 months pregnant at the time. I was struggling to get comfortable in bed, but finally settled on my back with my hands above my head. No sooner had I started to relax that I felt a cold hand on my stomach. It took me a moment to realize that the hand was coming from the wrong direction. It was as if someone standing besides my bed had their hand on my stomach. I immediately sat up and looked around, but no one was there other than my ex who was facing the opposite direction. I told him what happened and he told me it was probably the baby kicking and I was mistaken. What I felt was definitely not that. Shortly after this, I started to see a yellow flowing dress with small flowers. I don't really know how to explain it. It was like I constantly would see the tail end of someone walking into a room or down the hall. I never got to see the whole person, just the back of the flowing dress. I didn't feel scared, but instead, peaceful. After the birth of my second child, we moved into a bigger apartment across the hall in the same house. I immediately noticed the atmosphere felt different, like the air felt almost heavy. The second night there, I could hear voices on the baby monitor. Thinking maybe I was picking up voices from the apartment above ours, and being the nosy person I am. I laid there with my eyes closed and the monitor pressed to my ear, listening hard, trying to pick up what was being said. Suddenly, I could hear a door in my son's room slowly creak open on the monitor. I stopped breathing, trying to listen closely, thinking I was going to hear my son's tiny voice or small footsteps. Instead, it sounded like someone heavy with steel-toed boots was running down my hallway, into my room, and then they launched themselves onto the bottom of our bed. The whole bed shook. I felt paralyzed. My ex started screaming, thinking we had an intruder, but no one was there. We tried to rationalize what had happened. Maybe a spring got caught in the mattress during the move and happened to release at that exact moment, and maybe the footsteps I heard were actually from upstairs. All I know is that from then on, I was absolutely terrified to stay in the apartment without lots of lights on at night. There was also a weird room slash storage area attached to my son's room that gave me the absolute creeps, and I could never get the door to stay closed. 
I put a hook and eye lock at the top of the door and almost every day I would go in and the lock would be off and the door would be open. We never used that room and my son was only three at the time. Finding the door open always gave me anxiety, like that feeling you get right before something bad happens. Which is such a weird thing to say about a random empty room, but it's true. Not one second from the time I moved into that apartment until I moved out a few months later did I ever feel comfortable. I always felt like I was being watched. After moving out, I met multiple people that lived in that house and every single one talked about all the weird unexplainable things that happened while they lived there. This is the only place that I have ever lived that have had weird, creepy and or unexplainable experiences.